All right, um, on to our next point in what's shaping to be a series. French. Haven't played it in a while and decided to just sort of play it spontaneously based on the circumstance. Wanted to get uh, a good dynamic game and one of the must win games in the tournament that I'm playing currently. Today is the last round. This was uh, a couple days ago. I was fighting this very strong a woman international master player from Russia. So this is all pretty standard. Um, White chose to put the knight on d2. Um, uh, exactly in order to put the pawn on c3. As c5 is often the idea. As you know, White for example locks up the center with e5. So White is not in a rush to play e5 just yet. That would potentially, with bishop e7, it looks uh, just a little funky. But uh, in uh, in case of e5, black's knight would have the square h6 over to f5. That's part of the idea. So sitting and looking at the situation, I decided to play c5, keep the dynamic going. Uh, knight f3, and here I certainly consider taking on d4, which this would either get to isolated pawn, Situation which is quite favorable for black generally uh, for isolated pawn uh, sort of type positions uh, However, uh, knight d4 is also an option in which case knight c6 would be instrumental uh, Since knight f6 very good-looking move runs into bishop b5 Which is uh, just interesting to note And at this point, it's just a little bit tough for black because if we put a, uh, a piece on d7, either a knight or a bishop, e5 is going to kick our knight away to where we're not going to have uh, a proper square other than g8. Alright, uh, so that wasn't uh, what I played in the game. I actually aimed for exactly the position that we're going to see in just a moment. So, pretty standard, knight retreats. Um, developing my queenside knight, putting some pressure on d4, and at this point I strike with g5. So I kind of visualize this style of game as I actually chose to play e6, you know, as I started the game. And uh, uh, the advantage obviously is to get uh, things uh, uh, active and dynamic quickly. Uh, DC is uh, certainly uh, one of the main options, probably the main option in this position. I'm actually not so familiar with the whole theory of this variation. Um, I did anticipate DC and quickly took back with a knight. Uh, at this point, uh, ideas of G4 in combination with uh, picking the pawn uh, are cer certainly key, bishop b5, bishop d7, this style game. I felt like I could target the e5 pawn and take on c5, in which case uh, bishop b5 uh, is, is what I mainly considered, in which case, uh, you know, I could, uh, despite the dynamic, uh, the quickness of white's actions uh, available uh, to white, to... Uh, uh, follow up with the initiative uh, due to quicker development, my weakened structure, uh, I uh, would uh, be able to, you know, let's say some sort of scenario like this, I would be able to solidify in the middle. My king is relatively safe for the moment, but certainly I, I'm, I don't want to keep it there forever because white is going to be uh, working their way forward. Uh, but uh, at this point, my opponent uh, just played bishop c2, which is solid enough. I decide it is time to pick up another pawn. So I win uh, the pawn on e5. That's quite a delicatessen. Uh, we get the most important pawn. However, it does uh, open up also a very uh, dangerous open file, e-file, and my opponent plays exactly 
uh, correct, very strong F4, uh, just really trying to open up F file as well, which it would have been, uh, you know, possible for me to take the pawn, maybe retreat the knight, uh, keep things uh, locked at the, for the moment, and I would certainly have uh, uh, the opportunity to a uh, long castle. Now, this position is relatively well con controlled for, for this ver very millisecond, but uh, certainly things uh, are liable to get spicy and uh, I would have to uh, <laughs> really survive some defensive, uh, good defensive ideas uh, on my part would need to be implemented in order to play this game successfully, which in all honesty, this uh, situation is quite precarious as is. I, uh, without uh, particular knowledge of theory, I keep things, uh, uh, try to keep things uh, more kind of closed uh, so I, I don't expose myself to some uh, um, obvious, uh, you know, uh, attacking initiative ideas. So I play bishop f6, uh, which it would have been fair to push forward, e5. A couple interesting uh, points here. Queen g7 is the strongest move. Uh, queen h5 is uh, another idea, which actually uh, allows black to uh, uh, perfectly equalize okay uh, uh based on the evaluation of position and dynamically i think black is going to be in superb spot once pieces coordinate well so this is knight d7 this is just a very cool idea uh bringing the knight where it's needed over to f6 g4 potentially hitting that bishop on e3 uh and you know going after uh, white's queen rook would be coming to g8 uh would be hitting the the queen on a H, uh, h6 if it's hiding there so this kind of interesting flexible stuff we can quickly get the bishop out queen queen out long castle this sort of deal all right so but uh, queen g7 is a little bit tougher uh, and in this position you know again we uh, move the knight away with the idea of knight d6 knight f5 potentially okay very interesting original thinking here uh, i just chose to play bishop f6 my opponent uh, brings a knight forward. Now h5, the idea is to actually uh, get that uh, get that h5 square away from white's queen, which would be annoying there, uh, pointing at f7, h7, so I play h5. Now e5 would have been possible here as well. Uh, just to note, uh, okay, knight c6 intermediate moves are possible, and then uh, what I didn't like is uh, this knight settling on e5. So I play h5 and I take on d4. So that or knight e4 in particular order, h4, h3 idea, pushing that uh, pawn all the way to h3, creating some potential uh, interesting uh, action along diagonals when things open up, uh, some mating ideas, you know, that you could dream of. So for now, knight d4. And bringing the knight into the middle. My opponent could have picked up the knight and uh, like sacrificed the pawn on d4, which you know I probably wouldn't take. Um, just develop the bishop somehow, like this, for example. And then hope for some sort of way of developing in combination with maybe striking forward a little bit, keeping white uh, just. Uh, little bit on the guard as I try to complete my development which would be very important this position is is very precarious it's interesting but it's uh, you you still have to take care of business so uh, 95 the uh, 95 uh, knight plants in the middle um, so my idea bishop e4 de and obviously if queen e4, bishop c6, in which case, you know, I could potentially grab this knight, some end games so actually could be quite okay for me. Uh, I could be leading in those. And, uh, you know, I get a very nice uh, initiative here with a light square uh, bishop shooting forward. Now knight e5, uh, strong move, planting the knight in the middle, bishop b5, rook f3, and this is where I make a critical mistake. Um, this position, uh, you know, I was trying to play for a win, so I was looking for ways that I could uh, put more pressure. Now, objectively, rook c8 would have been best. 
uh, you know, potentially this sort of deal, this end game is actually not too bad for me. It's quite survivable, but as you could understand, down a pawn, I don't really have very high prospects uh, for trying to win in this. Uh, the more uh, sort of dynamic option would have been h4, and uh, you know, potentially, let's see, maybe we take. I guess here maybe queen d5 still would be would have to be the way. Um, otherwise, uh, bishop e5 is also possible intermediate idea. And uh, here, if only I could uh, <laughs> get rid of this pawn, my position would actually be uh, for that bishop on c6 and h3 and queen coming to d5 would be great. But the white uh, manages to block it, and uh, this position is. Uh, gonna be with uh, preference for white because his pieces are her pieces uh, would have been more harmonious a4 uh, it would have been interesting to consider this intermediate move lots of dynamic we're gonna try to stick with the main lines primarily but here is some is very unpleasant intermediate move even though d4 is hanging that's not gonna play into account because of bishop e3 so ultimately my f7 stuff is hanging here and uh, this tactic doesn't work out for me as well but the rook c8 would have been quite desirable and here i'm kind of uh getting in trouble my opponent plays exactly uh the strongest moves a4 b4 i kind of let her uh run me over for the moment and here with a uh, little time for my opponent i had a little bit more time that i accumulated by just playing quick quick uh, just sort of uh, most uh, direct moves um, I decide to just uh, keep making those threats you know keep uh, the dynamic going so that I could get some mistakes out of her so I hit the queen all right make her think uh, either one of the moves is, is plausible uh, g3 would have caused maybe some weaknesses in the position uh, potentially also swinging the bishop out would allow me to solidify that knight on e4 potentially that's kind of like just to keep uh, my game afloat so queen retreats queen goes away rather uh, queen b6 uh, hitting the d4 and at this point b5 would have been strong and dynamic i'm attacking the uh, the checkmate on g2 g3 and here i'm actually uh, kind of in a bad shape uh, so it wasn't obvious to my opponent that this position was so desirable so g3 sacrifices are not so so uh, killer even though it kind of does look like uh, this may cause white uh, some major trouble so bishop e3 i pick up this uh, evil pawn that was going to run me over b5 and all that so and my opponent plays f5 which is kind of like the obvious way to do uh, develop initiative the best move was rook f1 pointing at h5 and this would have given me some uh, some major pain so yeah this is not so easy for black the pieces are all over the position so objectively rook f1 with some uh, i can attack checkmate hope she blunders but uh, certainly queen f3 and uh, this position is actually pretty pretty tough for me uh, she plays a five and here I think for for a while actually use up a lot of my time advantage and uh, Queen b2 was a quick move, but then uh, I was thinking for a while and found this very nice option After fe I had to think a bit so bishop g5 is the only move to keep blacks game going So I don't have a continuation to my attack so part of like having all that g5 fun business uh is uh, just dealing with some of the uh, maybe if you get get too much into that sort of style play sometimes you can forget about or not have a chance or maybe not even need proper development but uh, king on the eight is certainly uh funky out there and i'm missing most importantly uh, aside from king safety uh also uh, some of my coordination which could be more effective is missing so bishop g5 this is key point to keep my business going uh, i'm hitting e3 hitting d4 and at this point uh yeah i, I don't want to get mated on f7 so i play f6 
and try and like slow white down as the, at the same time i'm crushing on this uh central d4 hitting the king just keeping things kind of a little uh, scary for her here and there and she decides to uh, bail with bishop b5 now that does uh, uh take down the rook that could potentially be active uh, but uh, that certainly diminishes her chances and gives me ultimately the advantage in this game so uh, what should white do um, it's bishop e4 i have queen d4 intermediate but that's not critical because uh, rook a1 is going to be need to be played anyways rook c2 looks kind of scary uh, g3 here's a number of moves uh, that rook e2 and ultimately like uh, you know uh, I could uh, even win a pawn or something, but uh, ultimately the best chance for uh, either side is more or less uh, uh, would be to uh, kind of like end up in some sort of draw, perpetual sort of deal. Now, uh, here was interesting idea of picking the knight right away. This is uh, something I calculated. This is worth mentioning. Boom, 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 boom. And at this position, look at my king. It's a true celebrity. And look at this king. It's just hanging out there on h1, taking a nap. And uh, in this position, rook e7, which I actually calculated, would have been... Uh, disastrous I did see Queen b3 and I was like all right well I have two extra pawns and this position uh, may be okay for me you know but it turns out it is not and you know I was definitely worried as I was contemplating on this sort of stuff so and this, this position the the best way is King d6 and this is the only way to keep the the game going and here probably black is doing quite Quite okay, but lots of checks, lots of uh, swindles. So maybe not exactly the sort of situation you want to be in, where the game is very straightforward for your opponent with little time on the clock. You know, play all those obvious checks, and uh, there's never-ending streaks of uh, def defensive prowess that you have to display. Um, now that uh, doesn't always happen exactly smooth. So bishop takes, rook takes, and I decided to choo choose uh, I, I, uh, to go for this uh, sort of position and allow her bishop b5, which actually works out really nicely for me. Uh, I execute rook g2, pick up the that hanging rook, queen d4, and uh, she doesn't take on c6 just yet. In this position, I was going to uh, do this number uh, and trade the queens, which h4 is just a genius uh, idea which uh undermines my plan so this uh move uh, uh facilitates basically the pawn all the way unless i en passant and uh rook comes in with a lot of activity otherwise uh my plan would have worked uh, pretty good uh even if uh i was maybe just start pushing right away uh maybe like this sort of deal uh, and uh, start pushing start pushing the pawn actually looks kind of double-edged with this a pawn probably not the best case scenario either all right uh, so in this position I st could still fight for advantage uh, if I don't see this resource but this resource as I uh, just uh, uh, realized the aesthetics of it uh, just really appealed to me so and as I calculated it worked well for me so I push forward I move my king up and what's the idea okay bishop takes e6 bc and my opponent uh, is very skilled player she really impressed me in this game she doesn't go for the obvious while I was calculating uh, on my time she also was doing the same thing and she realized that uh, bringing the queen in and uh, trying to to beat my king up is not gonna fire, fare, fare so well for her. So now, where's that king going? Let's make another check, right? Which check are we gonna give? So queen c8, k6, 
king goes up and guess what happens <laughs> the king just ends up uh running into uh into the attack and uh crushing on uh, white's defenses so the rook ends up being helpless so that pin in combination with the king uh, uh march forward decides the game all right so my opponent is very smart she pushes her king forward i pick up that pawn my position is completely winning at this point with uh three pawns knights solid in the in the middle uh, for you guys out there cheering for the strong knight, indeed, you understand chess. This is, this is how it should be. That's knight on e4, very strong outpost, supported by that pawn. So I'm controlling all those squares around um, uh, the king that, uh, except for from like behind, the queen could sneak in from behind and attack my king. All right, so rook h3. Mm, I'm trying to uh, do like plenty of checks and hopefully have those uh, work for me exactly as uh, this happened here so uh, I'm controlling uh, the h5 here and I picked up an extra pawn so I have four pawns now now uh, hard to say how valuable that is really because uh, maybe uh, maybe I should have bet on um, just pushing that c pawn as quickly as possible with you know in combination with the checks now after I pick up the pawn uh, my opponent actually managed to get a little counterplay going here and soon enough it actually becomes kind of unpleasant so queen h5 for now i'm actually feeling great i make this uh funky move so uh after rook f6 i would have been losing on the spot so for example after a4 rook f6 knight f6 queen takes e2 i lose my queen now i actually present her with another opportunity to sacrifice a rook and uh hit my king i'll just pick it back and uh my knight defends the queen there's no other discovered attacks possible so my king uh, is still in the middle of action so she solidifies, I push forward, rook f1, very nice move, uh, offering her more opportunities to go after my active king. Uh, I play logical moves but uh, on, on paper, but they're just not the very, uh, very most, pres uh, you know, line one of computer thinking uh, moves and they release, allow for her to like sort of get back into the game a little bit and uh, what happens next is actually could backfire for a lot of chess players out there including myself so queen d7 all right so now this is getting serious this is this is going to be a losing proposition for me letting her do queen a7 but i'm controlling a lot a lot of squares with my pieces so i play queen c3 this is all uh, happening with seconds uh on the clock both for her and i King c4, so I try that forward maneuver, doesn't work, okay, so king d3 runs into rook f3, potentially there may be some queen sacks, but not exactly this way, so, so I realize that I cannot go forward, I come back, and at this point, I, for a second, I'm actually not very happy, so I have to come back, queen b8, and here where I find this winning maneuver, this is a triangulation of sorts, I'm actually not, I'm shouldering black's, a uh, white's queen. So I'm, uh, my king is over uh, outplaying uh, that queen that is trying to do damage. Okay, so if I played king e8, that allows for queen e8. King d6, queen b8, and we're just circling around. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take away that extra opportunity from white. So I'm playing king d7, not giving him the, that uh, extra square. And now king e6, so there's no queen e8 check. So now queen c8, and uh, my king gets that square. But uh, let's see how the game went, actually. Let's follow the notation, king d7, and queen b7, king e6, queen c8, king e5. All right, so my king escaped, you see? Queen had to give a check from c8 rather than e8, and my king is escaping into the open field. So finally my plan works. I'm going to go and do damage with my king. So, king e7, 
king d4, queen b6, c5 works out nicely. Rook d1, and my king runs his way to victory, facilitating some knight f2 stuff. So at this point, uh, I think my opponent sort of gave in on like trying to uh, pull, up, pull off some sort of major miracle with uh, some really precise kind of like queen retreat or some cool move with no time on the clock. She goes rook d5, all or nothing. Maybe something will strike. Okay, so rook d5, actually, simply enough, I guess I could have just push this pawn forward. Then, uh, actually, first uh, thing that occurred to me is that, okay, I'm winning with the trading the queens. And <coughs> I can uh, uh, get my knight, get my king forward, push this pawn, uh, win the game. And then I'm thinking, okay, so I got this down with uh, an extra minute on the clock. I say, okay, let me uh, calculate some more. And I realize that queen one actually leads to mate. It's just, uh, it looks just a little bit, um, uh, it's just a little bit uh, hidden with queen e2 and interesting formation instead of just hammering her with uh, my queen uh, i engage my knight in this cool little way so so queen e2 check knight f2 with uh, the idea of bringing the queen to g4 checkmate let's see there's actually king g2 here hmm Let's see, queen f3, alright, queen f3 and queen checkmates from h1. Otherwise, either king h4 or king g3 would have been queen g4. Alright, so uh, uh, another successful g5 attack uh, in this game. Lots of cool action, uh, good uh, peace interaction, the pros and cons of some crazy strategy you could uh, really see and appreciate. And uh, hopefully introduce uh, this sort of idea with more contemplation in, in the, your overall strategy. So this was uh, the sort of G5 that I built upon a uh, certain dynamic that happened in the game, actually backfired because my opponent uh, ended up playing really well and uh, uh, ultimately worked well again for me just because of uh, like a lot of resources, hidden resources, and that uh, you know you put yourself on the edge and uh, you come out uh, victorious.